Podcast. Welcome to another edition of Indie Labs, where we put the science in your hands. If you've been paying attention to what movies are coming out, or even if you haven't, you might find that you have an overwhelming urge to levitate things with a force. Well, you can, and today we're going to show you how. But we're not talking about mini chlorians here. When I say a force, I mean a real one, the electrostatic force. Best of all, this lab is extremely low cost, but you're going to have to scoop up one of the materials during this holiday season when the getting's good. For our materials today, the most important one's going to be this type of plastic tinsel that you can get. Nice little wispy strands too, that's what you want for this. This stuff's really affordable. I got a thousand strands here for under two dollars. You're going to want also a PVC pipe. Did I say in these indie labs yet how much I love PVC? It's useful for so many things. You might already have some if you tried our Indie Labs episode number two. If you haven't seen that episode, you might want to check it out before you go to the hardware store to get some PVC. You might want to buy a few more pieces, then you can launch some rockets. The length that you need, maybe about two feet. You're going to want a stocking cap. Hey, it's winter. You probably got one of these anyway. Yeah, yes, they're not good. You're also going to need a pair of scissors just for some quick cuts of our little strands. Oh, and you're also going to need about a hundred billion trillion spare electrons. But don't worry, you can get those anywhere. Now our plastic strands, these are going to be what we're going to levitate. And we can't levitate them just as is, little individual spaghetti strands. So we're going to have to construct these into somewhat of an orb. Let's go ahead and make that. Tease out some of your tinsel and pull out about six strands. In fact, I'm going to use exactly six. And there's a reason why I'm doing this too. We'll show you in the experiment. Line them up, doesn't have to be perfectly end to end, but get them all straight next to each other. Take your six strands and gather them together. And you're gonna tie these in a knot. If there is a hard part to this lab, this might be it. They can give you some trouble, but I've had some practice. Good thing you got a couple hundred of them. Once you got your first knot, flip it over and about six to 10 inches from that knot, you can tie the other end in a knot too. Now that you have both ends in a knot, we're going to trim off these little wispy ends. Take your scissors and about a half centimeter away or so, give it a little snip. It doesn't have to be perfect and if you have some little frayed ends out there, that's not going to cause you any problems. Do that also to the other end and you're all set. So here's our plastic tinsel and now that it's tied in a knot at both ends, this can actually make an orb and this is what we're going to levitate. So now that you've constructed your tinsel, I propose that we're going to be able to get this to levitate with this and some extra electrons. So how's that going to work? Well, we got to learn some things about insulators and conductors. Let's do some modeling. Here's our stocking cap and the straw represents our PVC pipe. And let's add some green candies to represent the electrons, which are actually way smaller than that. If you take your PVC pipe and you rub it back and forth against the stocking cap, the friction is going to cause a transfer of electrons. They're going to go onto the PVC material, which is actually a really good insulator. That means the electrons are going to be kind of stuck in place. They won't be able to flow throughout the PVC. Then we're going to take the polymer and we're going to drop it onto the PVC pipe. It's actually a pretty good conductive material. So those electrons trying to get away from each other are going to go into the orb. Then they'll both have a negative charge, the orb and the PVC pipe. They should repel each other and we'll get levitation. So here's our hypothesis. If I give my insulator PVC pipe, some extra electrons, it will have a negative charge. If I then take my somewhat conductive thin plastic tinsel and I let it come into contact with my PVC pipe that has the extra electrons on it, those electrons are gonna try to get away from each other. Some of them are gonna go into my tinsel. Then, once my PVC pipe and my tinsel both have extra electrons, they're gonna be negatively charged and they're gonna repel each other. I'll get my tinsel to levitate. You ready? Let's give it a shot. Get yourself some extra electrons by putting the stocking cap on your hair and then move it around. And to be honest, even if you don't have that much hair, you can still get plenty of electrons. Now I've seen also like some stores and catalogs selling automatic wands where you just push a button and you can build up a static charge, but where's the fun in that? Get plenty of electrons. And now we're gonna supply some extra electrons to our very good insulator, the PVC pipe. Okay, take your plastic orb that you made and just let it drop and fall onto the PVC. Because it's a conductive material, electrons that are trying to get away from each other on the PVC are going to zap up into our orb. Here we go. And there we have it, levitation. You might also notice that when the electrons are in the orb, the individual strands, 
they repel from each other because they all have extra electrons. And so I chose six strands for this because then it looks a little bit like the cartoon model of the atom that we've sometimes seen before. It's also good to do this around the holiday season because when it's winter and it's colder out, the air is more dry. In humid conditions, this won't work that well. Now, it takes some practice. It's a skill you're going to have to develop. It might not work the first time, and it can be frustrating. But keep at it. You'll get the knack of it. And then once you do, find out what else you can discover. Experiment with it. While making these videos, for example, I discovered that it's attracted to electronic devices, like my camera. You can also explore how high up you can get it by giving your wand a few more electrons. Now be careful, if you get it too close to anything that has a little bit of conductive properties, like the wall, it's going to be attracted to it. And if it touches it, it'll give those electrons to the wall. But you can take advantage of that and do something really cool. Get your orb levitating, charge it up with plenty of electrons, and then, what do you think might happen if I touch the orb and I let it fall on my PVC pipe? Something else you may have noticed, you do this lab, side effect is that you're going to get some pretty awesome hair. Once you get the hang of it, you can try out some other experiments too. Check out some different shapes. What happens if you tie a knot in the middle? Is there a minimum number of tinsel strands you can use? Can you do it with just one strand that's not tied? How does the size of the orb affect how well it flies? Is there a weight limit that you have to consider as well? All these things are different variables that you could explore. Try to find an orb that works the best. And if you liked this lab, subscribe to the channel. We've got lots of ideas for any labs. They're not going away. Why don't you share this lab with somebody else? Teach them a thing or two. It is the giving season. And also, do you have an idea for a concept you'd like to see an Indie Labs episode explore? Tell us about it in the comments below can't make any promises, but from time to time, I will try to fill some requests. Despite what the t-shirt says, I do hope you have a good holiday season. We'll catch you next time. Bye.